I welcome you, brothers and sisters, to this Bible teaching meeting, the teaching of the Word of God. As you know, the Surefire Life Conference platform, our aim is simple. It is to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Because Jesus said, the Son of the living God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So there is eternal life for you, my brother. There is eternal life for you, my sister. It's just for you to receive him, Jesus, and also learn what God has provided. So uh, on this note, our theme and topic is abundant life in Christ Jesus. Abundant life in Christ Jesus. Our texts are taken from John chapter 10, verse 10b, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. John chapter 10, verse 10b, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I will read just by this time. I expect every one of us to um, commit these scriptures to heart, meditate upon it as often as possible, and get the light, the life, and the inspiration of the Spirit of God by this scripture. So I will read, starting with John chapter 10, verse 10b. Jesus spoke here. He said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, for by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. Beloved, without a shadow of doubt, God, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the sun, the moon, the stars, the creator of your life, my life, the owner of the bread that is in us, the creator of all human beings, the creator of spirits, the creator of angels, the creator of all things, through his son, Jesus Christ, has given us abundant life. Without a shadow of doubt, God has given us abundant life. That is all things pertaining to life and godliness by his divine power. Just as those two scripture references have confirmed, John chapter 10, verse 10b, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Let me highlight some key points again in that statement that I have said, that God has given us abundant life without a shadow of doubt. God has given us abundant life through his son, Jesus Christ. And this abundant life is again specified there in those texts we have read that is all things pertaining to life and godliness. So God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness by his divine power. All things that you require for your daily living and your service to God, because we are here to do the will of God. So all things pertaining to your daily living and the doing of the will of God. So your entire existence, God has given you all things that you need to have that life to the fullest. The second point to highlight there is that it is by his divine power, divine power. Divine is that which is of God, from God. 
So it is by the power of God. God himself is the one who orchestrates this, who manages this, who makes this to happen. Wow, what a blessed life. So the world has rejected what God has provided and they choose their own. And then we will wake up and ask the question, why? In fact, that's what we're going to be looking at. Why are things like this? But God, through his son, has made this provision of everything that we need in life and in doing his will. Actually, our life is really about doing his will, whether in work, service, worship, whatever, our lives is really about doing the will of God. And so God has made provision through his son and back this by his divine power. Now, you would see there that the scripture says that it's through the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, that this is possible. So in the course of our study so far, um, two brothers have raised very fundamental question that I want us to pay attention to, that hinges on this key uh, anchors of divine life, that is, all things pertaining to life and godliness has been given to us, and this is by divine power. So one of our brothers raised the question, question one. He said, God has given us this divine life. Why is there so much gap in our individual lives, in our individual life experience compared to this God's abundant life? Why is there so much gap in our individual life experience compared to God's abundant life? Question two, another brother asked and said, do we today, anyone at all, have power today to do all the things Jesus did and has said we should do. The second part has said we should do is added by me to make the question complete, as you would say. So let's pay attention to these two questions. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is the journey we are embarking on to understand this key that God has given us that to enjoy the divine life, to enjoy all things pertaining to life and godliness, the way God has designed it to be through his son, Jesus Christ, is in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. The synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, give us account of what Jesus did and has asked us to do. The rest of the scriptures confirm what Jesus says or said we should do and has also provided infallible proof of the reality of the abundant life of this truth. So we can unequivocally say, yes, God's divine power through his son, Jesus Christ, is working everything, yes, everything Jesus did and commanded us to do today. We can say unequivocally, yes, God's divine power through his son, Jesus Christ, is working everything Jesus did and commanded us to do today. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, why do I say this? In Matthew chapter 28, verses uh, uh, 19 and 20, Jesus resurrected from the dead and declared to his disciples. It says in verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Note that. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So Jesus is still the one doing the things that he did while he was here physically in the world. He is the one continuing to do the things that he, had, that he did while he is here in the world. And he has ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, having all power, all authority, all dominion, all preeminence over all creations of God in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth. And in that position, he continues to do that work. But he has given us the key or keys, the knowledge of God and of his son. This is what we have to know. And so here Jesus said, all that I have commanded you, teach them. Teach everyone to do what? To observe all things that I have commanded you. And that's why we are spending the time looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because that records what Jesus did, just as we have explained, while he was here on earth. And after he rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, he continued to do through the apostles, and he is still doing the same through us today, all those who have come to him. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. So unequivocally, the answer is yes. God's divine power through his son, Jesus Christ, is working everything Jesus did and commanded us to do today. Because according to that scripture that we have just read, in that Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, in verse 20, he said, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So Jesus is with us as we go and obey his command. He does the work. Hallelujah. And he demonstrated this when he called the 70s. First he called the 12, and then later the 70s while he was here on earth, just to give us example of what he will be doing in his resurrected, exalted position where he has ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So he has given us the command. Yes. He has given us the command. So our journey is to explore this command that Jesus has given us. It is for us to know Jesus himself personally. It's the personal knowledge of Jesus. The son of the living God, the mediator between man and God, God and man. The one in whom God has put everything for mankind. And so John chapter 1. Verse 12, you know the scripture. It says, as many as come to him, as many as received him, as many as believed in him, in his name, to them he gave power to become the children of God. But there are those who have rejected him. And so they reject him. They don't observe his command. And when we don't obey his command, they will be gone. And when we don't have the knowledge of his truth, there will be God. That same scripture or command from Jesus Christ is magnified or has additional points in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Let's go there and read. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. We'll read everything, so we'll see where the gap is coming from. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, 
but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Mark, mark you, he says, the signs will follow. It is following. Because the one who does the sign is with you. So now you can understand Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20 very well. When he says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. He is with you. So he is the one who does the signs through you, through me. And therefore, it is for us to connect with Jesus, the one who does the miracles. It is for us to come to him, Jesus, the one whom the Father has given, anointed, appointed, ordained to reconcile all men unto himself, unto God. That is why he is the Messiah. That is why he is the Christ, the anointed one. That is why he is Jesus, the Savior, the one who saved us from our sins. And we can continue to mention his name. So Jesus spoke here, Mark chapter 16, verse 17 now. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. 18. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Glory be to God. I paused because this last one is very relevant and is very necessary. Then he said, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is what Jesus has commanded. And when we do what he has commanded, he makes it to happen. Are you following me now? So now talking about the question, can any man do the works that Jesus did? You see, it is really Jesus who does the work through us. So it is not any man. But Jesus said, you have to be my representative. Jesus doesn't come to preach the gospel today. You are his representative. I am his representative to preach the gospel and to lay hands on the sick and to cast out demons. And when we do that, Jesus makes it happen. Everybody say, Jesus makes it happen. Jesus makes it happen. Jesus will make it happen in your life today. Jesus will make it happen in my life today. Jesus will make it happen in our families today. In the mighty name of Jesus. So in Acts chapter 3, verses 6 through 8, you know the scripture there. Before I come back to complete this scripture, Peter demonstrated this, just what we have said. You know there, there was a lame man sitting at the gate that was called beautiful, beautiful, a lame man. And so Peter said to him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And of course, Peter knew what Jesus commanded. You will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Peter reached out, rather, Peter reached out and grabbed him and raised him up. And instantly, the power of God, hallelujah, flowed through the man. The Bible says his ankle bones, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaped, he jumped and walked. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. So the key remains the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. We continue to read Mark chapter 16, verses 19 and 20. So then, verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere, 
the Lord working. Can you see that? Is the Lord who walks. So that you may now understand. Yes, the Lord is the same. So it is unequivocally, yes, the Lord is the same. The Lord Jesus has not changed. He has given us command. We are to obey his command and let him walk. So read that. Verse 20 with me. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Can any man do the things Jesus did? On his own, no, no man can do. But is Jesus doing the things he did today through any man? Yes, Jesus is doing the same things he did today through us, his children. We are to connect with him. We are to do what he commanded us to do. And so our work is to explore what he has commanded us to do. In our study, therefore, of the scripture, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have so far covered Matthew and Mark. In fact, today we have, we are studying the last chapter of the book of Mark, chapter 16, which is where we have taken our reference scripture from. Mark chapter 16, we've just looked at verses 15 to 20 to see the elaborated version of uh, the, 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 the additional version rather of the command Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 and 19. And he said, there, Lo, I am with you always. And here you can see he continued to be with the disciples, manifesting that same work. We have not yet studied John, but you know, I like quoting John chapter 14 to us. So let's just remind ourselves again. John chapter 14, verses 12 and 13 uh, and 14 i think 12 13 14 most assuredly i say to you he who believes in me the same word he who believes in me so it is about believing in jesus connecting with jesus coming to jesus he who believes in me nobody does it by himself nobody has the power to do it it is jesus walking in those who believe in him. If you have given your life to Jesus, that means you believe in him. It is time for you to obey the command of Jesus and let Jesus do his work in you and through you in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, you have still been playing church, playing religion. This is the time to give your life to Jesus. The key is in the knowledge, the personal knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ, and his word, his command, and doing his command. So I continue to read. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this, he will do. Because I go to my father, because I go to take the position, hallelujah, the position of power, authority, everything God has given to me because I have overcome the devil. I have, you know, uh, destroyed the devil. I have resurrected from the dead by the power of God. I am going to sit at the right hand of God. I have everything has been given to me. I am going to my father. 
And in that exalted position that I seek, the king, as the king of kings and the Lord of lords, everything is under my control. The works that I do, you will do also. Oh, glory be to God. I read it again. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also because I go to my father. 13, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the father may be glorified in the son. He said, I will do because in that exalted position, I have the power to do all things. The Father has given me everything. Remember Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. He said, all power I came out of the grave. He said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Thank you, Lord. So whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He was teaching this principle even before he's gone. Look at 16. You already know that. If you go to Matthew chapter 16, he repeated the same. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. He will take of mine and declare it to you. And he also said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, I will do it. In verse 23, verse 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So he rose from the dead. He went to the Father. He seated at the right hand of God. All power, everything is under him. He is the son of the living God. Glory be to God. Beloved brothers and sisters, so in the study of Matthew and Mark, I want to give a summary of headlines that we should be looking at then. A summary of headlines we should be looking at to pay attention, to look at. So uh, Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, uh, let's go there, let's go there, Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 4. Here he said that man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, every word. And you remember in Matthew chapter 3, already, I believe verse 17, yes, verse 17, God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Again, in Matthew chapter 17, in the Mount of Transfiguration, that we always talk about verse 5, there, God spoke again. Read it with me. Say, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. What do you do? Hear him. Listen to him. And so Jesus said, we are to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So to close the gap and to have this divine power manifesting in us, we have said there are six key things or areas we have to pay attention to, which is the summary of what Jesus, uh, you could summarize and say what Jesus talks and what Matthew and Mark have Discourse. Number one is knowing Jesus Christ. That's who he is. You, your knowledge of who Jesus is. Number two, you see, Jesus demonstrated a number of things. 
First, let's focus on what he says we should live. So how we should live. And I want to caption that in what I call social issues. How do we deal with social issues? So these were the things that formed the headlines. So there are social societal issues. Jesus thought about this. You go to divorce, you will see what Jesus said about divorce. Uh, handling situations, difficult situations, challenges in life. And that's why we form discussion group and give them some headlines. So number one is for us to come to that knowledge of who Jesus Christ really is personally. Number two is to know what Jesus thought about the social issues. How do we deal and how we should handle the social issues? There are so many of them. I've just mentioned a few social issues. Number three is the power. How do we manifest or do the work of God, manifesting the power that Jesus manifested and demonstrated. So the power of God, the divine power that has been given to us, how do we receive it and how does it work through us? The, the, the same power that Jesus Christ demonstrated as we read in various ways. Number four, I want to call it wisdom for living. And so this cuts across many situations. Wisdom for living. Number five, I want to talk about yourself, your personal, because I talk about knowing Jesus Christ, and in there is your personal relationship. But indeed, Jesus taught us things like carry your cross and follow me, um, like we talked about John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as received him, how do you live your daily victorious life as a Christian? So living the, your daily life as a Christian. Number six is leadership, leadership. Under all these headings are subheadings that we need to talk about. For example, if we talk about uh, knowing Jesus, or we talk about the power of God, you see that in there, you will talk about uh, or living your daily life as a Christian, particularly the power of God. You will talk about faith, and you talk about prayer, and Jesus taught all this. So this is the assignment that I want to give to us and myself, every one of us, because this is where the gap lies. The wisdom of God is by the spirit of God taught through the word, the word of God. If you read what Jesus says we should do and you apply it, you will be wise. <laughs> Glory be to God. So this is what I want us to focus on. As you study, you can summarize this whole scripture into this headline. And I hope this will guide us in how we bring out the subject in this uh, synoptic gospels that we are reading. You can actually blow this up to 10 points. It's up to you. But I believe these six are big headlines. I want us to pay attention to how and what has Jesus said we should do in these headlines? Number one, who is Jesus? And how do you know him personally? How, who is Jesus? And how do you, how do I know him personally? Who is Jesus? How do I know him personally? How do I come into Jesus? How do I know him personally? Who is Jesus? Social issues. How? What are those social issues in your life, in my life? And what has Jesus said about them? The power of God that Jesus manifested and is still manifesting today. How do I 
become a vessel that that power manifests through me. Because this is what Jesus was teaching. The wisdom for living. There were times they asked Jesus questions. He will answer them. The things Jesus did. When I talk about this G wisdom for living, anyway, just to summarize, wisdom for living, which also relates with living your daily life as a Christian. But the difference here in living your daily life as a Christian is I'm talking about service and duties as well, service and duties. What are you doing according to the commandment of Jesus? Daily, daily, what are you doing there? And then number six, leadership. Leadership. Just to touch very quickly on leadership, you will notice that before Jesus started his ministry, what did he do? He chose 12 disciples. He went after the disciples. So in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus went through the temptation. Again, that also teaches us about these uh, life issues and wisdom for living. You can find it there. Jesus was tempted by the devil. Along the same line, the devil always tempts people. Pride of life, uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And Jesus overcame. And so you don't have any excuse. I don't have any excuse. How did he overcome? That's what we should do. That's uh, Matthew chapter 4. Then if you come to from verse 17 and uh, verse 18, let's start from verse 18. He say, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers, fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. We will talk about this in detail another time. But here you can see, Jesus knew that it's not by going alone. He needs disciples. He needs a team. So Jesus gave us the strategy for leadership. Build your team. Beloved brothers and sisters, and we are still part of that team. That is why he said to the disciple, go make disciples. And the same command is for us. And as we go preaching, praying for the sick, casting out devils, everything Jesus did and said we should do, Jesus manifests his power in us. And so in your own personal business, you see, Come to learn how to build the team from Jesus, the successful team. And how about how you manage that team? We'll be looking at that. God Almighty bless you, brothers and sisters. Um, this is where I will pause for your contribution, your questions, and then we will pray. Feel free, open the line, because we want to pray right away. We want to pray for the sick as well. We want to cast out devils like Jesus said we should do when we preach the gospel. So please feel free, open the line, ask your question, add your clarification, uh, what resonated with you, because this is about living this life. Yes, Brother Sonny, go ahead. Straight to the point, please. Just go on. Yeah. Yes, Pastor. I want to, yes, I want, I want to thank you for the clarification on the previous question that I asked. Now I have a better understanding that as a Christian, I do not have the power as a person. It's not my own power, but I can do what Christ actually did if he is in me. And he's the one that can do that thing through me if I have him in me. So thank you for the clarification. Thank you. So our text again, just to buttress that in uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 4 makes it clear there that we are partakers of the divine nature, which is Christ in us, the Holy Spirit of God in us, and God himself in us. Amen. This is the mystery of God. Yes, so it's Christ in us. And so we must surrender to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the access, and that's why those headlines we have to take and study. We must surrender to Jesus, he's the connection, and then God gives us his, 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 his Holy Spirit, and we have the relationship with God. And when we obey 
God's command as Jesus has taught. Jesus himself, whom the Father has given all power, all authority, walks through us. Thank you for that comment. So my point is, yes, indeed, the scripture that we read um, says exactly what you have said. God's spirit lives in us. Jesus it lives in us. The divine nature is given to us. We are partakers of the divine nature. We want to spend the remaining few minutes to pray. Number one, are you still struggling with sin, yet you say you are a Christian? You see, you have no excuse. You have to give your life to Jesus and cast out the demon of sin, particularly those who are involved in fornication, adultery, there are spirits behind those things. Those who are involved in um, using uh, diabolical powers, and yet they say they are Christians. All the bad uh, things that are happening, demonic idol, um, idol worship, idolatry, yes. There are so many vices right now going on in the world. Because we have departed from the standard of God. So, number one prayer, give your life to Jesus. And then we're going to go on to pray for all our needs. And so let's pray together. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the son of the living God. The one who came in the flesh and died for me. By your blood, I ask, cleanse me and forgive me all my sins, almighty God. By the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, cleanse me and forgive me all my sins. And Lord, deliver me from all uh, sin, the power of sin, the power of evil. And now give me your Holy Spirit, almighty God. Make me indeed your child. And help, help me to walk and live in your righteousness. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Number two, want to pray. Pray with me and let us agree. Anyone amongst us who is sick, Jesus heals you now. Like Peter said, in the name of Jesus, and that's what Jesus said, whatever we ask in his name, and if you yourself, you are sick as we are praying, then you will lay your hands upon yourself. I'll tell you where to lay your hands. So pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. The name that gives us access to the divine power that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, we receive it by your divine power. Right now, we ask in the name of Jesus, let anyone amongst us who is sick be healed now. In the name of Jesus, any member of our family who is sick now be healed. In the name of Jesus, lay hands on yourself. I lay hands on myself and I command every form of sickness, disease, infirmity. In the name of Jesus, go now. I declare myself healed. I receive divine health in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray with me as well and say, in the name of Jesus, I terminate every power of the devil, every walk of the devil in my life, in my family, in my brothers and sisters, everyone that is hearing this word. In the name of Jesus, we agree and we terminate and we cast out every devil and all the works of the devil from our lives, from our families, from anything and everything that concerns us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us all things pertaining to life and godliness. By your divine power, we ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, let all your blessings, all your goodness, all your mercy, all your favors, Overtake us today, this week, this month, this year, and all the days of our lives. Father God, 
By your divine power, help us to fulfill all your will and your purpose for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to just round off and you just agree with me saying a big amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for teaching us. We ask, Lord, that all glory, all honor, all praise, majesty be unto you, our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your spirit that you have given to us to teach us. And Lord, we ask that even as we are closing now, let our light shine forth your light. Lord, make us indeed a praise unto you that we will, every one of us here will continue to fulfill your will that when Jesus comes, we will all be with him throughout eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. To you be all glory and Father. Let our lives really glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. <music>